Good morning and welcome to St. John the Baptist Cathedral Basilica Parish. We welcome all of you present and those joining us through live stream. We encourage you to continue to use hand sanitizers and to maintain a distance of two meters in the communion line. The wearing of masks is still encouraged. Our presider this morning is Father Cecil Critch. And our gathering chant is in our CBW 3, number 486, Apostles of Our Ancient Faith, 486. Please stand. the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Father. Today we celebrate the feast of the Apostle St. Thomas. And St. Thomas, uh, as we hear in our homilies, but he was a doubter, but he became a very important apostle to uh, especially the people of India to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries today. We ask the Lord to come into our hearts and to forgive us our sin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Here God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. We glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of Son of the Father, you 
take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant Almighty God that we may glory in the feast of the blessed Apostle Thomas, so that we may always be sustained by his intercession, and believing may have life in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, whom Thomas acknowledged as the Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Ephesians. You are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are citizens with the saints and also members of the household of God, built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets with Christ Jesus himself as the cornerstone. In Christ, the whole structure is joined together and grows into a holy temple of, in the Lord, in whom you also are built together spiritually into a dwelling place for God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to Psalm 117, go into all the world and proclaim the good news.
those who have not seen me but still believe. Alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Thomas, called the twin, who was one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But Thomas said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then Jesus said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. And Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. And Jesus said to Thomas, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. So in the Gospel, we received hints that Thomas was a bit of a pessimistic person. When Jesus, against the wishes of his disciples, decided to go up to Jerusalem, it was Thomas, you remember, who took a gloomy view of the idea. He said, yes, let us also go to die with him. That was John 11:16. Thomas seemed to expect the worst, when on another occasion Jesus assured his disciples that by dying he'd be returning to the Father. Thomas objected, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way? That famous line. So it's not surprising then when the others were telling him of the resurrection of Jesus that Thomas ran true to form. Unless I see the holes that the nails made in his hands, and unless I can put my hand into his side, I refuse to believe. Many people are able to identify with Thomas at times. While the disciples excitedly proclaimed that they had seen the Lord, he had risen, Thomas still was shrouded in the darkness of Good Friday and was not moved by their Easter proclamation. He could not see that the crucified Jesus was now the risen Lord Jesus. The light still had not driven away the darkness of crucifixion. In his turmoil, Thomas was still full of doubt. Thomas declared he would not believe until he saw the Lord, and not only saw him, but touched his wounds. Thomas may be like many of the disciples of Jesus today. Many who are experiencing darkness, darkness in their lives. They cannot see the light of Easter entering their lives. They doubt that they have been saved, maybe, and God even doubt that God even loves them. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief, may be their acclamation. Today's gospel reading assures us that the Lord understands a doubting, questioning faith. When Jesus eventually appeared to Thomas, he did not scold him. You know, you who doubted me, no. His first words was, peace be with you, a reconciliation. He invited Thomas to touch his hands, touch his wounds, his hands and his side, to doubt no longer but believe. Then out of the mouth of the doubter came one of the greatest professions of faith, in Jesus to be found in all the Gospels. He said, my Lord and my God. The Lord considers any one of us who is a seeker struggling with doubt for the Lord will keep drawing near to us, inviting us as he invited Thomas. Doubt no longer but believe. People always think of Thomas, you know, as the one who doubted the resurrection of Jesus. But if we look at the witness of Thomas's entire life, you know, what happened to Thomas after, uh, after this? we find new lessons for our own spiritual journey. According to a long and well-established tradition, Thomas was a rather active apostle after that. He seems he pushed the boundaries of the church far beyond the Mediterranean basin where Peter and Paul labored. He traveled to Parthia, which is a northeastern section of modern-day Iran, where he preached and founded a church there. From there, he moved farther east, all the way to India, where he, must, he laid a very deep foundation Thomas's work there was so powerful that even today Christians in India still honor him as their patron and their father in the faith. He may have doubted, but the whole of his life reveals not a doubter at all, but a faithful follower and believer of Jesus Christ, an apostle, a missionary, an evangelist, and a martyr. If we feel like Thomas at times in his doubt, remember that Jesus accepted him right where he was 
and took him deeper. He will also meet us there too where we are. He will be patient with us as we grow in our faith. And we stand on this special day and profess our faith as Thomas did. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Our prayers of intercession for our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and Peter, our bishop, and for all those who shepherd, uh, like the apostles, shepherd the church in these challenging times, we pray to the Lord. And we pray for peace in our world, especially in areas like Sudan and Ukraine. We pray to the Lord. We pray for all those who are seeking the Lord. We pray for all of us that we may be evangelizers, proclaiming the gospel of Jesus to those we meet every day. We pray to the Lord. We pray for the sick recommended to our prayers. We pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, and we pray especially today for Agnes Hayes, Gertrude Gorman, Norma Forbes. For these and all those who have died in the peace of Christ, we pray to the Lord. Lord and for the prayers in your hearts today. We pray to the Lord. Lord and God, our Heavenly Father, we ask you to hear and answer all the prayers we have in our hearts. We make them in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. Pray, my sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Let us pray. We render you, O Lord, the service that is your due, humbly imploring you to keep safe your gifts in us, as we honor the confession of the Apostle St. Thomas and offer you a sacrifice of praise through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you, Eternal Shepherd, do not desert your flock, but through the blessed apostles, watch over it and protect it always, so that it may be governed by those you have appointed shepherds to lead it in the name of your Son. And so with all the angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy,
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection we offer you lord the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of christ we may be gathered into one by the holy spirit remember lord your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with francis our pope peter our bishop the clergy and all your people Remember all of our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, with St. John the Baptist, St. Thomas, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs with them to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. And deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We share the peace of Christ now with one another.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. For the reception of Holy Communion, we ask that people from the side sections come to receive Holy Communion first. Please maintain a two meter distance in the communion line and sanitize your hands before receiving Holy Communion. If you are unable to receive Holy Communion, you are welcome to come forward for a blessing. Our communion chant is 6.4 in our celebrate in song, Let Us Be Bread, 6.4. Let us be one in 
Let us pray. O God, as we truly receive in this sacrament the body of your only begotten Son, grant, we pray, that we may recognize him with the Apostle Thomas by faith as our Lord and our God, and proclaim him by our deeds and by our life, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may Almighty God bless all of us in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Thanks be to God. Our missioning chant, number 495 in our CBW3, We Walk by Faith, 495. by faith and not by sight, no gracious words we hear, of him who spoke as none spoke, but we believe him here. We may not touch his hands and sight, nor follow where he trod, yet in his promised we rejoice and cry my lord and god help then O lord our unbelief and may our faith abound to call on you when you are near and seek where When our life of faith is done in realms of clear 